The following podcast contains strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. My name is Craft Ginger and this is Roll for Discussion, a small podcast where myself and a few others will delve into the multiple topics around the popular game of Dungeons and Dragons. If you have any thoughts, opinions about what has been discussed or topics that you want us to cover, then feel free to post them down below in the comments section. If you enjoy this content, please leave us a like and smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell for more. And now, without further delay, we will begin tonight's very first episode, Session Zero. This is Roll for Discussion. Joining me on tonight's episode, we have Bewilder. Hello. We have Nathan. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> we have Peter. Uh, hi. And finally, we have Zenith. Hey all. What's up? So, for the very first topic in Roll for Discussion, named Session Zero, we are going to be discussing session zero as in how would you go about starting a session zero and we can look at this from the angle of dms or as players so i think what i'm going to do is go around the table and i'm going to ask each one each person uh, are they going to be discussing their thoughts and opinions from the side of a player or from a dm or a bit of both so i'll start off with bewilder all right well I, i'll do player since that's the only one i've ever done fantastic and nathan I'll be doing player as well. That's okay. Also, the only thing. <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, Peter. Uh, I'm down for discussing a little bit of both, as I've done both. Excellent. And finally, Zenith. Mainly player, but I can do a little bit of uh, of DM as well, so I can okay. I can add that extra bit of balance. All right. Brilliant. So yeah. So when it comes to session zero, what would you guys say is some of the the key elements that need to be covered i think that the tone is important to establish what kind of campaign yeah. your players want you, you need to know like is it going to be a purely you know comedy one do they want a really long sweeping campaign that you prepared that goes on for 36 years and two weeks in real time or do they just want a one shot you know you need to manage their expectations is, is the biggest thing i've found I think uh, uh, to follow on from that point, I think I, I had I've had a campaign previously where it wasn't explained to the players exactly what they were getting into, and then like eight sessions in, they were like, "So how much longer is this like going for?" And thinking it was going to be like a like a ten session thing, and then they'd be out where the the DM had planned for it to go on for like a long term kind of campaign, years potentially, and these people were like. So we've been in it for two, two and a half months, so we, we're about done. So I think that, like you're saying, that's really important to kind of set that kind of expectation for what kind of commitment you're asking for from the players. I think that's a really good point, actually, because you know, obviously not everyone uh, can always do a, a very long term commitment. Uh, so by at least making them aware of how, or how long it how long it could potentially go on for and also as well when you look at um, like how often you're going to meet so i mean you could have you could have a campaign that is going to last maybe 30 sessions but if you're meeting up say twice a week you can get through it fairly quick and do that in a short space of time but if it's a case of you're only meeting once every two weeks or maybe even only once a month then you could be looking at easily you know making the this the campaign last for a year so i, I think yeah definitely establishing the sort of length sort of uh, time span as it were uh, is definitely definitely one of the key ones i would say yeah definitely have a safe word if they want to get out of the uh, campaign early would you have oh, a join us I... next week when we discuss the topic of sexualizing D and D. Is it so bad? <laughs> okay, but to, to be fair, you bring up safe words and that actually kind of leads on to like a really valid point about session zero, which is kind of like what don't people want included i mean i've seen uh, i think like i can't remember what the actual word is but it's like you basically you give them um almost like a trigger warning trigger list of like 
what don't you guys want involved in this campaign? Because there are going to be people out there who are like, ah, I'm, I'm like uncomfortable if it becomes too sexual, in which case, cool, then put the brothel in the corner and just forget that exists. Or people that might be like, you know, the, the idea around, I don't know, um, stop captivity, slavery, that kind of thing. That, that makes me really uncomfortable. So it's like, all right, cool. If that makes you uncomfortable, then I know that that is not what might have originally been an arc about maybe dealing with slavery or dealing with being captive or something like that if that's triggering for somebody then it may be it's that moment of going okay cool i know that's not a safe topic for you so that's something i'll use in a future campaign when maybe you're not involved or maybe you feel more comfortable around it but i think that's like you say like you know safe words but maybe that's actually a really valid point of like you've got to make sure your party feels comfortable with what you have planned and make sure that it's not going to be triggering or upsetting for anybody given uh like the like how uh, modern people are these days there's definitely quite a variety of things that can be very divisive for people so yeah, yeah i guess establishing uh, straight off the bat what sort of things are people comfortable with delving into because i know obviously there are some campaigns that maybe they might fr splash in a little bit of politics maybe um like some uh, racial divides and that sort of thing and others might completely just ignore it altogether uh, so just yeah just just trying to get that, that that bit of bit of ground groundwork laid out with everyone that could definitely help to solve for like future problems because you really wouldn't want to have a campaign you know it's been lasting say you got you get a campaign that's been going on for six months and you you've you've built you've been building up this story element that you haven't introduced yet but it was involved around something that you hadn't discussed at least some of the key aspects of it with the group and you bring it in and you suddenly find that you've got one two maybe even like you know three players are like oh i really i'm really not comfortable with this kind of subject matter i don't think i want to really be involved much more of this and it can kind of end up derailing like the sort of the whole campaign yeah and on, on that that topic as well i mean maybe staying away from like the or bring it back from the uh the, the thing people don't necessarily like to see is also the um the, the, the sort of the tone I know it's a tone already but what kind of themes people want because I don't know about everyone here but I'm kind of sick to death of the first session where it's like there's some goblins in that have stolen some stuff go to their camp just outside the village get it and come back and then you know that's kind of been done to death so for me that would be something as a player I'd go you know can we have something that's a little bit more inventive you know yeah, so uh, try maybe what think a bit more like outside the box, like not not so much your like conventional like uh, tropes that you would get in a very early uh, part of a campaign. Yeah, like for me, I'm I'm not a big fan of high fantasy. Like the, the, you know the I know D and D in its essence is kind of high fantasy in a way because you've got you know elves and dwarves and orcs, goblins, but there's a lot more scope to do stuff with that rather than just you know the generic tropes, mm. and that's what I'd like to see. Uh, I think you stepped on um, almost another point, which is quite important to discuss. Where you, you were saying, like, you get quite bored of the same old thing, like, you know, it's the, oh, goblins have done this, oh, okay, go deal with that. But that steps on the another bit of, like, how experienced are the players at the table? Because if everyone's done eight, nine campaigns, then then yeah, it might come to the point where actually you need to think in order to keep them interested, in order to keep them excited about what's going on, maybe you do need to think about outside the box. But if it's someone who's like, this is my first ever campaign, and most of the party, it's their first campaign, then maybe you go, all right, cool, you can use the cliches, because that's a nice way of helping them kind of learn that first step. It's like, goblins are a relatively easy, simple kind of fight, so maybe that's a good idea for a newer campaign where they're still getting the grips of combat, but if it's someone who's like, a 20 year D, D veteran then you might so, want to mix it up for the first encounter so it would sort of come down to i guess then one of the key elements in a session zero is to establish everyone's experience within the within the campaign yeah. oh with, sorry within not within the campaign within D, D itself therefore then it can probably help then set up how that campaign uh, could begin okay so we've covered uh, those sort of uh uh, elements uh, any other sort of things that you think were be important to cover uh, when uh, doing a session zero I've... Uh, Nathan did you say something maybe something to do with like preparing them for what they might be during so like say what the story could potentially be so 
how they could write their backstories in that as well. Into how they go into those. Yeah, that's that's actually not a bad show, uh, really, because yeah, I guess it could. Do, if you've you've got someone who's created a backstory that actually has absolutely no no ties to what the campaign could be evolved around, it would. I imagine it could be quite difficult to try to engage that player into the story. So having given them some kind of an idea of what to expect, without obviously going into the uh, realms of like spoilers and stuff, but to give them maybe some sort of premise of like what the world is like, um, you know, some a few maybe like key points, uh, key points of information that again isn't going to like break the game or anything for them, but just sort of helps them so that, like you said, when they when they do do their their character backstories, they can like. Well, so, so I was using an example. I have a, a pirate run campaign, and so I've you know, I've let my players know, like this is obviously a pirating world. You're going to be sailing on a ship with a crew, so like people were using ideas for their backstories. Is like what would have motivated them to go and join a pirate crew? It was that <laughs> just the basic of just starting idea. Of, oh, okay. How do I get this character? <laughs> Random noises. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? They get random noises, yes. I think you've, you've touched on uh, another point there where it's, it's important to bring the team together because there's nothing worse than having four or five people go, ah, I'm a lone wolf and I don't like to play with anyone or fight with anyone or be on a team with anyone. And then you've got, you know, four people that hate each other and don't want to be playing together. <laughs> you want to be or four characters sorry not people maybe you are maybe you're playing on people that you despise but um you, you want to have the characters kind of have that camaraderie maybe a little bit of tension sometimes a bit of rivalry is good um i had a session uh first session a while ago there was a um a, a, an archer who shot an arrow missed and it went like right next to my head um as a, a unknown barbarian and i got well my character got got severely annoyed with that one for shooting the arrow and nearly killing me um and then he basically walked up put the arrow out mid-fight and then stabbed another um another human next to him and goes that's how you use an arrow um so that little tension is fine but you kind of want to have that team building to know how they're all gonna play together um so they, they've actually got a bit of a reason to fight with each other oh i was going to say like as the individuals yeah but it's like maybe you have that character that's like been all alone for like ages but then try to get as in whatever and stuff and get see, their character growth as well but that's just my point. see I, I don't mind too much if someone wants to try to be a bit of a lone wolf providing that they have some character development over the span of the campaign so that they might be a bit wary of being part of a team you, you would have to try to find a way to write in. It's like, well, why would you be with this group in the first place then? If you're so much of a lone wolf, what is it that's forced you to be sort of... But well, maybe it's a case that you have been forced to join this group. It's just where then you'd obviously have to sort of maybe make some alterations if that's what that wasn't your original plan for it. But then what I would like to see is that over the next several sessions, there's some form of development and they can learn to become part of it. Because I, I completely agree with you. If you've got you've got quite a few people and none of them are interested in actually working together i mean yeah, what i mean boring. That would... well it's not to say it would be, it'd be boring but you you're making you're making I, I feel like you'd be making too much work for your dm at that point because it's just sort of like why would you join a group just to be deliberately difficult and separate be separate from the rest uh, i mean unless you're just a bit of a, a sociopath that wants to just mess with people because i don't know but <laughs> i mean what again uh but what do you what do you think of that with the idea about uh the the lone wolf sort of aspect yeah i mean yeah. going from a beginner to perhaps a sub intermediate player as i might consider myself now uh <laughs> The lone wolf thing doesn't bother me as much as just the disruptive players, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Where they just kind of like randomly stabbing people or just randomly making so many out of like uh, story jokes that are, or out of story like questions and things that's going off on tangents so much that you kind of forget like where you are. Well, the, the first bit you said there, I think that's, isn't that the term uh, murder hobo? Where like if you're just like going around sort of... Um 
like stabbing yeah. people and stuff like that. But I, I, I know it. I've got another term for it, but yeah, at the hobo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Which I haven't played with any, you know, true murder hobos where they really do go and stab everybody. But I mean, they're all, it seems like I'll end up with a few people who's always threatening to, and then once in a while they're just kind of, and I'm like, you know, it, unless you just want to die, right? If your character mm. just hates life, you know, maybe he just goes around stabbing everybody, but like, you know, you, you want to assume that they want to survive. It's like, you can't just go doing stuff like that. It doesn't make a lot of sense, so. Plus, then all yeah. the other people kind of, they're like, you, you're supposed to help us, you know, fight this battle that I started with all these people. It's like, if I was the character, I would not, like, I would not be in your group. <laughs> <laughs> we would leave you. <laughs> I was just in a different group, so it's like, you kind of have to go along with it sometimes for the good of the group, but. I yep. feel like that's more annoying than people who want to be a lone wolf. It's just people who want you to be a part of the group or want to be in a group, but then they want to do stuff that the group isn't really a fan of, or maybe half people are, half people aren't, or whatever. I think that um, taps partially on the kind of, like, maybe talking about alignment of the members of the party. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got... Or, or how alignment looks to certain members of the party. Because if you've got a bunch of players that are all lawful good aligned, but then you've got someone who's chaotic evil, like, that can be playable. I've, I've had campaigns where you've, I've had characters that are like that, but in, they need to, in session zero, you can have a conversation about exactly what that's going to look like, how that's going to work, and how you're still going to be able to interact with the other players. And if that's not something that can be worked out, then maybe you need to rethink your kind of alignment because otherwise it's i think like you guys were saying it's how do you sort of sort of make it so that them being part of the group makes sense like if you're a bunch of paladins and clerics going around healing and saving people but you've got a rogue that's constantly just stabbing people and killing people and being like it's my character like why would you how do you argue that they're still going to hang out and work together? It, so maybe that kind of conversation about how we're going to keep this group together, what our alignment's going to be, and how are they going to work to like fit is one that could be quite important to have. I think you've definitely yeah. touched upon something there with uh, yeah. with alignments. Definitely, it's something that I don't that I I, I tend to keep overlooking when I've uh, started campaigns. I think it wasn't until I actually played the session, played a campaign with you in it, Pete, that you even made me aware of alignments and like I hadn't even given it that any sort of consideration at the time, but it is definitely something it's one of those things I guess it's not just so much the experience of the, the players but also the experience of the, the DM. Because if you've got if you've got players that have more experience than the DM then these little things can get missed out. So I think it's also quite important that the, the players try to give uh, try to help out with uh, that beginning part. Just check in with the DM to see how, ask them how much experience have they got running it because you could have the opposite problem, couldn't you? So mm. if you, you've got players that have got a ton of experience and you've got a DM who's only ever run like one campaign and they only ran it for like six weeks, you, you might have run into quite a lot of issues on that bit. So There's nothing more awkward than being the, the DM in a situation where you've got three or four players that are telling you the rules and that you've done something wrong. Mm. Which is, yeah, a little bit iffy. It can be. I think it depends on how well you can take you can take that sort of, uh, I would say, criticism, correctness. I don't know what the right word would be on that. I mean, I, I, Pete has, uh, has, has managed to call me on a couple of things that I've made mistakes on, but he's done it. He did it in a way that, you know, he's been very respectful about it. He just said, are you aware that in the book, this is how you would particularly go about that sort of thing? Now, lucky because I was running like homebrew and stuff, we were able to like resolve the situation and be like, right, okay, I oh, know that's a fair shout. I should have been asking for this type of a role instead of this kind of a role. Uh, and it's, it's something you can get resolved uh, fairly quickly but I can imagine there are some people that won't take that quite well like having someone being told so I guess that's something that's another thing then I guess to establish in a session zero is obviously not just experience for the players but how much the experience of the DM knows and how they feel about the position of a rules lawyer yeah I mean I mean that, that's touching on uh, on other topics we, we, we've got coming up isn't it but um it uh, is it is I feel I do feel like session zero does it does probably gotta uh, 
have a, quite a few of the top, uh, future topics we got are probably going to have little elements. So we won't go we won't go too far into things like that. It's just I think it, I me personally I think that would be something that's worth bringing up at a session zero, just for a like just so down the line. So again, I'll take my own examples and my experience on this one. Um, in one of my campaigns, I have P as my designated rules lawyer. So <laughs> if there is something that I I mess up at some point he will then um, shoot me a message and be like, by the way, you uh, fucked up. Yeah, it should have been this. It's like, ah, XP, thanks for not embarrassing me. Appreciate that. <laughs> I was just going, yeah. I try. Cosmetic guy with the rule. <laughs> like, ah, he is the judge. He's got the hammer and everything. I, I am waiting for the day, though, they, that, that P gives me a rule and I've actually gained the knowledge where I could turn around and go, well, actually, to your actually, actually P, it's actually, actually it, I got it this way round. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll happen. Be, it'll just be both of you playing it reverse Uno. And then I'll know I've, I've learned everything I need to at that That's, point. It's the moment I hand over my, my D20 to you and <laughs> yes. take a back seat. <laughs> it'll be like, ah, yes. Time to retire. The student has become the master. <laughs> it's just a tear down your eye. <laughs> so proud. Uh, does anyone think there's anything other, any other things that we might need to? I uh, need to cover over. In a session? I have one. I have a one that I've just thought of, which is so important, and I think, um, uh, it's, it's what to do when. What is the plan if a player cannot make a session? Ah yes, so to, that's a really important thing I guess to cover, and I guess it sort of falls under like scheduling. Yeah. Um, so what I, me personally, what I would do is, is to say, uh, so we after the session zero, we'd agree on say like what the next uh, date would it be. Now, obviously, this is where you gotta want to discuss with your players about how often they could be around. Um, you want to see if you agree on are you looking to have a weekly game um, a two weekly game a monthly game or maybe even multiple games in one week uh, and then yeah, I guess you go then want to establish the sort of rules about keeping each other informed I think the key is obviously going to be communication and the moment that you're aware that your plans may change is to then inform the DM Not the, the, I'd say the one thing do not do and I advise this to anyone out there uh, who's in a campaign and they've got a DM just as a sign of respect for your DM do not leave it to the day of the game to then tell them that you're not joining and if you're going to do that at the very least give them some context as why don't just be like oh by the way I'm not joining I'll see you next session it's like me yeah. personally I think that's a that's an extremely disrespectful thing to do towards a DM considering how much time and effort some some DMs do put into getting their campaign sorted I don't think um, it's also not just disrespectful towards the and it could also be disrespectful to like everyone else playing at the same time. Well, if you've got, I think not, if you've if you've got uh, like a key event or something coming up that's going yeah, to require yeah. to have all your players, then yeah, hundred percent, because you could end up having to postpone that event to another session and try to find a filler to sort of carry it on. Um, at the same time, I guess you'd have to also then agree upon. So what Pete was originally saying, they agree about what would you actually do in the event that someone does bail? And I guess this, this, this is the answer, really. It's either if it's a key thing that you feel, you know what, you have to have everyone involved with this, then you postpone that and maybe put a filler one. I would, I would avoid just cancelling the game altogether. And I do this based on the number of people that you have playing. So say, let's say, hypothetically, you have five players, one person pulls out. Now, if it's not a key event, or if you're comfortable with uh, not having that person in there altogether, I say you go with the majority of the players. There are four people who are still willing to play, and you should not the those four people should not miss out because of one other person. Um, I, I, I completely agree with you in that situation, um, and I've actually it's the only time I've done it as a DM is is kind of retconned really slightly to the the last bit of the previous session and gone well you can't make it because of xyz so this session something will have happened to you that incapacitates you or means that you're not around for this one it basically means you're maybe you've gone off somewhere to try and do something maybe try and work with the player very very briefly to try and come up with the solution of why they're not in there for just continuity's sake so 
Yeah, I mean, I will, I will say though, just real quick, just, uh, just in case, because I, I just saw a man of people in the comments is like, oh, this guy's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will this say, I, I completely. Thing is, oh, I completely yeah, get. Well, I swear, I swear. If if someone's got like, if it's like a family emergency, you know, you know, right. something as completely out of their control that's come in, like, of course, you've got you've got to have a bit of leeway on these sort of things. You've got to be understandable. So I'm talking more about someone who just drops because they've just decided they changed their mind they can't be bothered or like they decide they've got to double book themselves uh, he's talking like, about a specific situation here <laughs> i might be i might be thinking <laughs> about but specifics maybe it is also though general i think it is just i think in general i think that should be how it, how it is you know if there is if it's a genuine emergency or something that is completely out of that person's control you obviously can't hold it against them you just that's what it is, but I definitely think though it's so if people are purpose. having that. But I think that's something that needs to be established early on. So what I've what I've been saying in campaigns is like you know situations like that come up. Fine, you know there's nothing we could do about it. We just we move on, and what and you come back when you can come back. But those who do that sort of thing and it's not like an emergency thing, and they repeatedly keep bailing on it me i'd say maybe give them one two chances on that and if they carry on it's be like well i'm sorry you're out because all you're doing is disrupting you can't even give genuine good reasons why you're not taking part you've given plenty of time to give like heads up so that we can make uh, changes and stuff and all it's doing is disrupting the flow of the campaign and from experience if that happens with one player then it starts happening with, with the rest of them as well yeah not saying that the rest of them are, are, are bad it's just you kind of lose a bit of respect if if someone starts doing it it's like well fine you know we can't we can't play the way we want to play so when it comes to their turn that something crops up it's like well i guess i'll some, someone else has done it three or four times so i guess I, i've got a buy at least yeah yeah no definitely uh, i uh i personally had a made the made the mistake when i when i was dming once of like going you know what, if someone can't make it, we'll just we'll just skip a session. We'll skip a session, it's fine, I want everyone to be here, like that kind of thing. And then it ended up with one person would, would not be available, so we'd skip a session. And then someone else would be available the next week, so we'd skip a session. And then you'd go months without a single session because people kept like rotating out who couldn't actually come. So like if so that's maybe one of those things of I wish I'd at the start gone, alright, if you can't make it, we're gonna carry on without you. And you're just gonna have to catch up whether your ghost there or whether your character is off doing something like mm -hmm. i wish i'd done that because it, it ended up like basically ending ending the campaign because we went months with people not able with without a session and then we just went it's basically over isn't it like this is mm. this isn't going to continue anymore so you know that's that's why i think it's important to be like if you can't make it we will continue without you or we'll only skip one session and if we're well, sorry if that's you but like yeah that it, but that's, that's true you know something to think about i i would say that i would i would look at skipping a session if on, on i think two situations one again if it was a key if it was a key of a moment in the campaign and you and you just couldn't get a filler in for whatever whatever reason you just there was no way like you didn't have enough time to prep um you couldn't improvise um or like the, the campaign was set up in such a way it was impossible for that party to go off and do something else that they were stuck in the yeah. area then i'd say yeah by all means you're gonna have to postpone that one uh the other one would be if more players are unavailable than players available then i say again you go with the majority of players unless of course you have something that you could do that's so such a minute little filler for the people that are there that it doesn't actually have any impact on the campaign I was just thinking, like, could you imagine if it was like, you, you end the session with the the final boss makes a big rousing speech and somebody can't make it to the next session, so you're like, filler episode, we're gonna go shopping. It's like, <laughs> <"Not> like <laughs> welcome to the important oh, oh, shopping mall. What would you like to buy in the shopping mall? I swear the big bad guy was just <laughs> giving you his ending all world speech. The fuck? <laughs> First shopping mall in, in the middle of my evil guy speech. As a DM, there is nothing more I hate than people coming into town and going, Oh, is there any shops here? It's like, yeah, probably, <laughs> I don't know. 
I was like, well, what kind of shops? I blacksmith and I don't know, paper maker. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> paper maker. That's, that's what I'm just going well, as the magic item tier. Can I get magic item? Right. <laughs> And then you've got to come up with a personality for the shopkeeper and a name, and then it's just, <laughs> I, it, in the bane of my existence, I had like a, a whole stack of notes dedicated to shopkeepers and just randomly generated personality traits that I could dish out. It was horrible. I hated it. I spent my entire working week was being brought up with creating shopkeepers. <laughs> and then What's the funny? next session comes up and they're no longer interested in shopping. <laughs> <laughs> All those notes just go out the window. <laughs> Now you mentioned shopkeepers, that like reminds me like, with Session Zero again, set up the level of magic that's in your campaign. Like, tell them what their expectations are of, firstly like, are wizards and mages everywhere, but also like, what magic items, you know, may maybe you can ask what magic items might you be wanting in the long term that you can potentially fit in, or even like, let them know this is a high magic campaign or a low magic campaign where you might in high magic campaigns getting magic items all the time but in a low magic campaign you might not get items till level four level magic items till level four level five even maybe later so maybe that's something to set up so you don't have that conversation of oh are there any magic item shops here that i can go to like you don't have that conversation every 30 seconds that's if not can, uh... like, set up the premise of they that is extremely uncommon only major cities will have that or you won't find it it'll be artifacts you find from dungeons or something maybe that's... setting that kind of idea up also, that's not a, that's not a bad shout, and also, just um, I think this this also helps with something that um, uh, Bawolda was saying earlier. Again, you could use the shop as a, as a way of an example, and uh, it can sort of deal with people that want to be that are looking to be sort of murder, murder hobos, and you let them know that. And again, use the shop as an example. Is that you could have your campaign that your actions are going to have consequences in here, so. It could be a case of if you cause a problem, say for a shopkeep, um, you try to rob them of their stuff or whatever, or you try to attack them. Maybe that shopkeep turns out to be a level, a failed level twenty traveller who can just kill you in one shot, or maybe they spread the word out to all the other shops, and now no one wants to serve your party anymore, or they're going to give you, they'll sell you everything, but it's going to cost you three times as much beforehand. So maybe like it can help sort of set the idea in motion. It's like you want to cause problems, that's fine, but it's not just going to be a case of you're going to be in fight. You're almost going to be able to not get anything that you need from stores. Yeah, that, that, that feeds onto another point, which is going to be way down the line, but letting your players know that their actions have consequences. Uh, and I, I think there's something very refreshing as a as, as a DM that players can have that understanding that if you go and rob somewhere, there's going to be people that are after you, whether it's the local law enforcement or a guild of shopkeepers, or if you've stolen something from someone rich and famous, that, you know, it doesn't just end once you've broken out and got back to your safety of your, your hideout you know they're, they're gonna come after you and hey it's not my fault you did this you ended that I'm just a DM I'm telling the story I'm just telling what's happened and <laughs> you will pay for the you will pay for the stealing yeah and, and in, in that way you kind of don't even have to write a campaign you just you know I mean yes there's a responsibility for the DM to do that but you can just naturally let that story flow and go well I've got another art going on here because you guys just decided to screw everything up mm. yeah that is, that's pretty good that's, that's not a bad show um, I will say one thing we haven't actually touched upon yet with a session zero is uh, about people's characters so this is what I'm going to direct to Peter and Zenith to start with how would you look at about like as a say as a DM when you're speaking to people how would you go about for people to like when it comes to setting up their characters would you have them create their characters there and then in session zero or would you give them some time from session zero to then by the time session one begins they've got their, their characters ready uh from my perspective it, it depends on the, the experience of the player if it's someone brand new i would like to sit with them and go through every stage of character creation with them and get it that they're done and dusted um it gets a bit tedious if you've got a whole band of new people um mm -hmm. if it's someone more experienced i'd rather go you know what's the premise of your character you know just here's the discussion of the world and the backgrounds 
go nuts, make your character and just report back to me once you've done it and kind of entrust them to do it. That's that's my perspective on it. <laughs> and Pete? Honestly, yeah, I was going to say pretty much exactly the same. Like, it's going to fully depend on the experience levels everybody has. Like you, like you said, if a, a new person, there probably is going to be a little bit of hand-holding to start with because they've never done it before. But And then with an experienced person, I could say you could do it either way. Like, you can say, hey, by the way, send a message. This is the premise. Bring your character to the session zero, and then we can discuss and adjust it. Or it can be come to session zero, we'll have a discussion, and then you can go away and make your character. But then I guess that also depends on, ro like, which is another thing to discuss is, how do you want stats to be done? Because you've got the question, uh, do you want to do roll, roll 46 take away the lowest one, or do you want to do one of the ones where it's like a preset account, uh, like numbers? Or do you, do you want people to roll in front of you? Do you trust them to roll secretly like it's that's other like other things that are quite important to kind of discuss when setting up characters yeah and i know that it's a, a really tiny point to get hung up on at the beginning of a campaign but the the way that you you roll for characters or do point by it it, it really I, I don't know what it is i'm i'm all for rolling for your characters and it kind of irks me when i go as a player and someone goes oh we're doing the point by system because it's the best i'm just like i just like rolling dice. This is why I've come. I've got this great big sack of dice here. You're telling me I can't touch it right now? Like what the? And it's not because I want to roll a character that has got like you know 18 in each stat or so. I, don't, I, don't, I think it's 16 is the highest you're allowed. To, I, I can't remember, but I want to see how bad my character can be because I'm bad at rolling. So I love getting like a, a six or an eight in a stat and going. Well, I've got to live with this now. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, maybe that's. Go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, sorry. No, no, you can go first. I was going to say maybe that's maybe that's something that we we can discuss at some point, like the two, the the pros and cons of point by. Thank you for reminding me what that was called, and and kind of rolling for your stats because it can it can create two very different campaigns. I think from the get go, just see it like with how different people's stats all end up because of the method that you take. That's good, and it does actually it does actually make me think of something else then when it comes uh, into a session zero um, about whether to choose now again this is a topic this is one of the topics I think we've got lined up down the line about whether to be XP or milestone yeah we have for got your that experience that is down as one topic um, so we won't go over it too much here but I will put this one towards uh, Bewalder and Nathan as the as our newest uh, players what would you two say now, Bawold, I know you've had experience with XP and Nathan, you've had experience with Milestone. I'm not sure if you've either of you have done the other one, but from your no, I from, have no experience with XP. So you've had so Nathan, yours has exclusively been Milestone. But Walder, have you exclusively done yours through XP? Oh no, I've done both. Oh you've done both. Okay. Well so this one this one's gonna be mainly then to you at the moment, Bawold. Is like what would you just say? off the off the bat which one you find has been more uh i don't know if you want to say more balanced has just been better suited what do you which one of you think do you think that you would have a preference for well just based off my view and personality which probably doesn't match most players i i honestly don't really care about it being balanced i i don't mind if there's some characters who are more powerful than others it seems like that would give you more of a challenge in your group of trying to say okay how do we protect this weaker character with our stronger ones and like how does this this character might be a higher level where maybe we can get some something we can do to to help the other character catch up or something as we need them so that's what one one thing i do like about the uh xp if i've seen i've had seen it where they've done it where you the group gets some or their group accomplishments and then individuals if they do really well and they don't you know go around being a murder hobo then they get more and their person gets better and I kind of like that too so I think it does kind of help them reward to like attempt to not just hide and succeed and do well at something hmm. okay and uh, uh, Nathan how do you find the how do you find milestone experience I find milestone experience probably a bit better because if say with xp you can't say everyone's always there at all times that's not going to always happen at the time so milestone kind of can be better so that everyone's in like around the same space of levels okay so that's, you don't a, have, that's like, not a bad point people that are like 
say level six, and then someone's at level four because they haven't been able to come to sessions because of life mm -hmm. and just other things like that. So I, I prefer a milestone that way. That it makes everyone almost yeah, it's annoying for some, but bad for when everyone's trying to be around the same level and work upon that. Okay, and then uh, I'll pass it over to Pete and Zenith. Um, if you when you've done a session zero, do you prefer to go down the idea, or is it is this something that you would just like discuss again with the group and to see would you go for like a majority, or do you have it set in your mind? I'm going to do it XP, or I'm going to do it milestone. I think I personally usually have it in mind, like how I want to do it, because. It can make certain things easier to plan, depending if you know how you're doing it and whether either acquiring XP or what point they're leveling. But I think, you know, if, if I was like, oh, I want to do my milestone, but the entire group is like, oh yeah, but we all want to do XP, mm. it, it, it becomes a discussion. But I think the DM kind of has final say because he's the one who's going to have to, he or she is the one who's going to have to work out what exactly, like, when you're leveling, how it's going to be balanced, how it's going to work. So, you know, it's I'd say it's up to the DM, but I think. Take take into account what your what your players kind of think about it. Yeah, I've um, I've got conflicting feelings. I, I used to be uh, purely XP as a player. I was like, it's got to be XP. But that was partially born out of my 3.5 um, edition experience, which was a bit more hardcore on the rules than um, fifth edition was. But having experienced milestone now more and more frequently i think it enables better story playing and oh, story playing that's just off a verb um storytelling uh, <laughs> although it's like D, D is story playing isn't it thinking about it, um, <laughs> it, it you know because then the the dm can structure how they want things to to be and when when you level up and and when they can introduce new, bigger and badder enemies but at the same time, if you do the, the XP system, you're kind of giving players something to look forward to when they get through a fight. Because sometimes there's just a fight for the sake of being one and just an encounter to get through it. But if you're actually giving them the reward they can, that they can tally up, it's like, oh, brilliant, juicy XP. And in some ways that's better than the gold that they're actually getting because then they get to play with bigger and better things. I, I will say when um, in my first ever campaign I played, it was done in XP and there was there was one particular one, Herb Boulder actually was with me at the time, we had uh, somehow tamed a wyvern and the mm. the amount of XP that came through that one, like I was just screaming in my chair, like yeah! it was just so, so satisfying about hearing all these numbers coming in, it'd be like, oh I've leveled up as well, it's so cool. <laughs> so I guess yeah. seeing something like that is, is pretty cool. I could just sort of imagine though, because I've read posts and stuff of people where they've been playing for such for several months before they even get to their next level because they've already had a higher level, and the amount of XP they need to get to the next one, just I could I could just sort of imagine like you're on like say I don't know level fourteen and it's level fifteen you're going to get your really good juicy abilities and it's like yep well I'm not going to see that for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I did think that. Go on, Nathan. No, I'm just saying it does sound interesting, XP, but it's because it's something I've touched. It sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um. For for me though, like uh, in a campaign, I don't think I've ever made it past level what three or something, because just because the milestones are so slow or the XP is so slow, and it's like you know I, what are all the other levels for if I'm only going to get to level three anyway. <laughs> 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 I, I, yeah, see, you, you're touching on another point. Is is what level do you start at as well? It's, That's true. It, yeah, it, it, it's all very interesting to start at level one, which um, you know I think is fine, especially if you've got inexperienced players. But if you're, if you don't really get your juicy stuff in your class until you get to level three. But that's really when you want to. In my experience, that's that's a really good time to start a low level campaign. Is level three rather than level one then you've got mm. more stuff that you can do in character creation. That's naturally, it's not a bad show. I guess, it, again, it is something... It sort of ties in with the experience of the players. If you've got... If, if the majority or all of the players that are coming in have uh, little to no experience, then you might as well start them off as level one and ease them into it so that they can get to learn what abilities that they currently have 
because I think at level three, I know they're not going to be they're not going to have like a massive list of them. But if they're like say magic based, then they're obviously going to have access to a lot more uh, uh, variety. And so you have you could end up having that uh, problem, which is something I think is in a later discussion. Uh, you know, when you've got you, you've got a player, it's it's their turn in combat, and they're going through, and it's just like I've got seven spells, and like, they're yeah. just sitting there and they're just trying to work out which spell they want to use, because they they haven't played enough to like fully understand it. Whereas if they started off at level one, maybe they've only got I don't know, maybe three or four spells or something. And it's just a little bit easier to dive into but i definitely think like it will tie in with experience if you've got a whole party and these all these guys and girls here have been playing for you know well over a year or something it's, there's nothing wrong with going yeah guys we're going to start it off uh, everyone's going to start level three it, it does it definitely makes sense i think at that part i think that that actually loops it back around to the what we were talking about earlier about the whole fighting goblins are the start cliche because if you're level one there's, there's only so many enemies are actually strong enough to fight but if you go, all right, we're going to start level three, then you can like, cool, all right, I can start you off with, a, more, oh, you've got a wider variety of creatures that you can make them fight, and it gives them access to higher level enemies that won't instantly obliterate them because they're just a level one party. Yeah, definitely. So as you're speaking, I'm looking through the monster manual to see if there's any other uh, low level, interesting enemies. For... There's, I know there's like a, there's a, there's a severed hand. I, I can distinctly remember there that. There is my, my a mindset. severed hand. I <laughs> started the yeah. entire old monster is just a severed hand. My most recent campaign oh. at the end, I started with zombies as the first enemy that they fought against. Yeah. They're actually pretty tough because they take quite a lot to go down, don't they? they it was like they've got like a the the save, which means that like they can hit zero, and if they haven't taken like radiant damage or a crit, like they can make like a con save to stay up. And it was yeah. it was really awkward because my party kept they they went one way or the other in two different fights with zombies. Like the first fight, they either got crit. I think they got crits really fast, or the zombies just rolled really low and wiped out what I thought was going to be a pretty hard challenge really quickly. To the point where the zombie didn't actually get to use the ability to stay on its feet. And I was like, <laughs> oh okay, that's a shame. All right, I'll put another fight in with zombies later so they can actually see that mechanic. And then I got to use the mechanic over and over again because the la like the last zombie just would not die like, <laughs> it kept going to zero and then it would succeed on the save and I'm like uh, and it's still up oh no it down to zero and it saves on the oh it's, it's still up and I, at some point i just yeah at a certain point i just went it can't hit any of you like there's like five of you hitting it 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 like fudge how do you want to do this yeah like i'm, I'm not gonna like it's it's an interesting one, but ah, oh, that was so hard to kind of like manage almost. I also find it uh, watching this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found uh, a good uh, alternative uh, to goblins and things like that because they are. Not many people know the, the rules behind that con save either, especially if yeah. you're like um, even you know moderately, moderately experienced players can. Uh, come across them and they'll be like, why aren't these things going down? I don't understand. <laughs> They're getting back up again. What do I have to do? <laughs> I just hit them harder. That's it. <laughs> uh, right, so can anyone think of any art last uh, elements to include in a session zero? Um, maybe just okay. the last point. One, like, It might be worth mentioning expectations around metagaming. Oh, metagaming, yes. That is definitely something uh, worth bringing up. Um, I don't know if you have a topic on that later to discuss. There Maybe? is. That is oh, yeah. in... That is one of the that is one of the lists. That yeah, the, I see it, yeah. Metagaming. Lists. So, uh, just, you know, mention that now and it can be discussed yeah. later on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely we'll expand on that topic uh, later down the line. But, yeah, that's definitely something that should probably be introduced as well. Just, again, get that just get that that definition in there nice and early so people understand what metagaming is because they, they, you're definitely going to get uh, new players that aren't going to have a clue what you're talking about and they might and some of them might unintentionally metagame you know i don't know it's probably to do with more of online in person probably but like would you how we prefer if you with like roll 20 with digital device or if you were to be okay with players 
roll with your physical dice kind of thing. Uh, yeah, uh, that is that is something to take into consideration. So, obviously, when you're doing your session zero, I guess one of the first things before you've even done the session zero is when you're obviously reaching out for a group of people to play. You'd be, you'd the, I guess, one of the very first things you'll establish is if you're going to be meeting online or in person. And if you're obviously meeting in person, then the, you could always you could always still bring in like uh, beyond D and D on the phone to use it for your dice if you didn't have physical ones but when it comes to online uh, again, it, so I guess it sort of comes down to trust again like say so if you could people you could give people the option to say right yeah you can roll physical dice I mean you'll never get you as a DM you're never going to see what that dice is so you, you are going to be putting quite a lot of trust on that player that they're going to be straight up honest with you every time on what that role is but I, I personally would say if you're going to do it online I'd say what whatever format that you're going to use use that to have the dice roll you can always set it up so that like we say with roll 20 that person's dice roll is only shown to the dm you know if, if that's how you want to want to play it out or they can make it public but me per me me personally i would say if you're going to do it online i would say just roll the dice online as well yeah i suppose yeah. i'd like rolling dice i'll probably still I'd roll my say... dice <laughs> I love rolling oh, yeah. physical dice. It's just so Roll about it. Rolling physical dice, then roll online, and just hope they get the same number. <laughs> <laughs> if the if the gods allow it, it shall be. If um, I get this one. Gods. Um, one thing I'd like to to add on the end. Uh, since we're talking about session zero, we just had a session zero last night with Crafty as the DM and me as a player. So I think he was looking at all the notes he might think about today and hit all those to uh, last night we had everything you know we understood we got the lowdown on on the expectations how the uh campaign was going to go how to use the technology what characters needed to be we've got enough information we know what's going on in general but we have no idea how it's going to play out and the expectations were clear and concise and honestly that makes it more fun as a player because now we know what we're expecting and we know that everybody's on the same page and it's it's just uh makes for a likely a, a more fun campaign than just you know saying Here, whatever goes mm. Yeah, because again, again, the main, obviously, I'm sure everyone will agree here, the main point of when you're playing D&D &D is to have fun. You want everyone to be enjoying themselves. You want to have a good laugh. You want to, you want to get, you know, dive into the delve into that story and like, you know, feel part of the world and all the rest of it. And so, as long as everyone knows from the start where where everyone stands, how it how it all is, is going to be playing out uh, to a certain degree, you can then focus more on the fun part of it, and you're going to have hopefully fewer instances down the line where you're going to be pulled out of the game because you're trying to establish a rule that could have just been established right at the beginning someone who teaches yeah. children for a living i definitely appreciate and try to explain every day how you can't really have fun without rules so we d we d i hope we understand that as adults too we can we can hope <laughs> we'll see i don't know we, we better hope there's not a lot of hope for the future sometimes is what i'm, what I'm looking at <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I, I, and on that very dark bombshell, we are going to <laughs> very, very dark bombshell. <laughs> we are going to call it an end to session zero. I would like to thank Bewalda, Nathan, Peter, and Zenef for joining me for this. I hope you all out there have enjoyed and uh, enjoyed what you have seen and heard, mainly heard. Um, seen? Yeah. You can't see shit. That's all you're about. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you might have gained a bit of knowledge, maybe a little bit of inspiration. Uh, uh, if so, <laughs> here's your inspiration point. If there's anything that you, maybe you feel like we've missed something out, what do you think that should be included in a session zero? Please leave the comment down below. If you liked what you hit, heard here today, make sure to hit that like button, smash the subscribe, ring that notification bell, just so you know the next time when the next topic comes up. Uh, guys, do you want to say your farewells before we call it? No. I guess not. I took idiot so hard. <laughs> I want five hundred. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Bye. <laughs>